Welcome back guys, we are continuing on with these Mechabellum 1v1 replays and we've got another hacker game up but I decided to play it a little bit differently this time so my plan was I wanted to try and goad them into building Vulcans because I wanted to hack the Vulcans basically now <laughs> It didn't quite work out how I planned it, but but it was still it was still a fun battle. So basically, I start off with crawlers and mustangs. So these are obviously prime targets for a Vulcan. Now, what I'd normally do is skip the first turn and then build two hackers on the second turn. Now the problem with that is you've shown your hand right at the start of the battle. Round two they know that you're going for hackers and then they just build storm callers. So what I wanted to try and do was hide my intentions of going for hackers and try and just go for Mustangs only to try and get them to build Vulcans to counter the Mustangs. At which point, once they've locked in the Vulcans, I'll then switch over to Hackers and put the shields on and see if I can hack the Vulcans. That is the plan anyway. You shall see if it actually comes off or not. So obviously at the beginning things look a little bit tense because we're facing arc lights and sledges but when you've got armor specialist the arc lights don't actually one shot the mustangs it takes two shots to kill them so heavy armor specialist is incredibly good when you're using mustangs versus arc lights it doesn't protect you from the sledgehammers. Oh no, maybe it does. Yeah, I think it... Hmm. No, no it doesn't. So it only protects you from the arc lights. But it does buy you that little bit more time to take out the arc lights with your mustangs. And now we've got heavy mustang as well. So now we've got increased HP. A little bit reduced range, but triple the HP. Can't complain about that. Now it's going to take the arc lights even longer to destroy us. So it's going to take them four shots now instead of two and it's going to require the sledges to shoot twice oh it looks like it's only three shots for the arc lights not four but it'll definitely buy us some time anyway So, as you can see, I'm just going Mustangs and nothing else at the moment, just trying to get them to deploy a Vulcan. They've gone for the intensive training, so the Vulcans are going to be pretty scary. So the heavy mustangs are doing a pretty damn fine job. Am 
managing to hold their own against splash damage units, which they don't normally do. So even the level 2 arc light is not able to one shot the Mustangs, which is nice. So there's a couple of things here that might interest me. Portable shield and the haste module. And he's fallen into the trap. He has gone for the reduced cost giant unit. Which is not really going to benefit him at all. He should have gone for the shields. The portable shield. That would have been much more useful for him. And there we go. We have got him to deploy a Vulcan. So we're going to start with our hackers. So he's bought the field recovery and he started selling off his arc lights, which is a bit unfortunate for us because we wanted to hack them. But there's still plenty of other targets that we can hack. So we couldn't afford an upgrade on the hackers this turn. So they're not going to have a great turn until we can actually afford some upgrades for them. But they're hacking some sledges distracting the Vulcan. It's close. We might be able to steal this Vulcan here. And we managed to get him. <laughs> so it worked perfectly. We goaded him into getting the Vulcan and then we stole it off him. So, let's see. So we've got Junior Manufacturing. It's pretty decent. None of these are really that interesting, to be fair. I'm probably better off just saving my supply and investing it into the hackers. what I do. He does the same. So two more hackers. We've got enough for an upgrade this time. So what are we going to go for? Shields or range? So this time I decide to go for range. Now he is shielding up which is the best thing to do against hackers. So this is going to be quite challenging to deal with these shields and this Vulcan is now level 2. And he's using a rocket. So this rocket is going to kill the hackers, unfortunately. So I should have gone for the shields. That's why I always go for shields first. Well, normally. Because they nearly always go for a missile. So unfortunately it's going to catch a load of the Mustangs as well, but we've managed to hack one of the arc lights. They've sold off some of the sledges so we can't steal any more sledges. So they're doing the right things, shielding up and selling off the units that we want to hack. But is the Vulcan 
the right choice for them? That's the question, because really they should want sledgehammers, not Vulcans. So they win that round because we didn't have shields and because they used the sentry missile. But let's see what the battle looks like once we've got the shields up. Now unfortunately, electromagnetic blast has appeared. So he's going to be using that to take out our shields. I probably should have used it myself to deal with their shields. But I didn't want to spend so much supply just on a single one-use ability. I wanted to invest into my army. So, we've shielded up. We've got another hacker out. And you can see how big this disc is. It actually covers the edge of this hacker's shield and this hacker's shield. So this one ability is going to take the shields off all five of my hackers. And he's put a rocket down, which is going to kill at least one, maybe even both of these hackers. So it's going to be a pretty devastating round for us, this one. So down go all of the shields. And down go both hackers. So yeah, a devastating round. He sold off another one of the sledges, so that's one less thing that we can steal. The one good thing is, is at least it means that we can focus our hacking on the Mustang, sorry, on the Vulcans themselves. So it's kind of a double-edged sword selling off the Mustangs. He should have replaced them with Fangs. Not Mustangs, sorry, the Sledges. But because of the ability, it was a devastating round for us, and unfortunately, both of these shields survived with a tiny bit of health. So we're going to have to chew through them shields again. Which is rather annoying. So there's a chance he might go for skill specialist, but he doesn't. That's interesting. So, let's see what happens here. I've managed to level up one of the hackers. And I decide to go for Stormcallers to deal with the shields. And I put range on them. I probably should have put the anti-tank missiles on them, or the anti-tank shells, rather than range. So, a bit of a mistake there. He's brought in another level 2 Vulcan, so lots and lots of HP we're going to have to chew through here. But he's locked onto the shield, which is good. Okay, let's see how we get on here. It's looking precarious. We're losing the hackers. And we just about failed to take this Vulcan. We got the one in the middle, so that's 400 less HP that we're going to lose. But we really needed the anti-tank shells on the Stormcallers, so that was a, a big error by me. But luckily, because we took out that Vulcan in the middle, we managed to survive on 100 health. So I'm going to be able to rectify my mistake. So we've both gone for ranged specialist. I've leveled up the hacker in the middle. I've put the anti-tank shells on the stormcallers. Leveled up the middle stormcaller. So he's shielding up again. So he is spending quite a bit of money on shields. 
That's the one decent thing about using hackers, is you don't have to keep spending money on the shields. Well, he's taking a long time to decide how to spend his supplies. It's probably confused him a bit, coming up against such a strange strategy. It's probably the first time he's faced it. And he's decided to go for Elite Marksman. And Range and a couple of shields. So let's see if these shields are going to be enough. So the anti-tank missiles, or shells, sorry, are doing a much better job. It's going to make it a lot easier to actually hack these Vulcans now. Let's see if we can get him. And we've got him. So, we managed to make up for the mistakes of the previous round, and it was enough to win the battle. Fantastic. So, yeah, it was precarious. We got down to 100 hit points. It was on a knife edge. But it worked. Going for full Mustangs, managed to get him to fall into my trap, and he sold everything apart from the snipers. And, oh, there's one arc light hidden behind here. <laughs> so he virtually sold off his entire army to pay for these Vulcans and these snipers. So the strategy kind of worked. It was just very, very tense. So I'd have to try it again to see if, it's, uh, if everybody would fall into the trap. Basically, the idea is you don't want the opponent to build Stormcallers and so this is there simply as a deterrence for them to build Stormcallers and it worked this time but who knows it probably won't work against everybody I think as soon as people see the hackers most people instantly click Stormcallers you can kind of get around it by using crawlers to distract but it's not ideal but anyway that was this hacker match a bit different to the usual ones so i hope you enjoyed it cheers for watching take care and i shall see you in the next one